Destiny 2, the final shape. What are my thoughts on the end of this first saga of Destiny? Well, there's a lot of good. There's very, very few bad things. So, let's figure out what Bungie can use to improve on for the next saga and beyond, including episodes, which are Echoes, Revenant, Heresy, and then the new saga, which we don't know the correct confirmed name of. Right now, all we know is that it's A New Frontier, or some something like that. Starting with the Pale Heart, the campaign, everything to do in the Pale Heart, from Pathfinder objectives to you know, triage chess to even overthrow and the exotic dual destiny mission. Linear destination, don't really know what to think about it. I personally have ups, downs, pros, cons about it. I like it. Only thing that can just get too repetitive is overthrow. It takes so much grinding to even get the transcendent title, the destination title, you have to do at least 20 you have to do 25 different pathfinders completed and the only way to complete pathfinders is by playing tons and tons of overthrow and you also have to reset your ghost rank 3 times which the best way to do that is overthrow and you get not that much so it's extremely 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 grindy the cysts are all fun sword dance slayer searing light Aerial Ace and Smothering Darkness, super fun cyst. I do not like the moth infested cavern. Um, gives me all my friends, everyone I've played with, flashbacks to Ghosts of the Deep, where the boss just throws moths at you because they have nothing better to do. Um, Excision on Grandmaster, ten out of ten. Have nothing but amazing things to say about Excision on Grandmaster. Have only good things to say about the raid especially that fourth encounter but i'll get more on that later um but the pale heart it's a wonderful wonderfully crafted destination all the way from the beautiful lush grass of the lost city and the landing to the dark twisted cuboids and shapes of the transgression beautifully crafted destination legend campaign is the hardest thing the hardest campaign we've had in destiny from all the way from d1 all the way to the final shape now it blows every other campaign out of the water the destination is beautiful overthrow is way too grindy other than that nothing but astonishing astonishing things to say about the pale heart uh if bungie can give us more linear destinations in the future that would be the best for the game, everyone I've played with, my friends, all love, love the Pale Heart. From getting the collections badge, which includes Kvostov, Microcosm, Still Hunt, all the, you know, all the armor, all the legendary weapons, to the emblem you get from beating Legend Campaign, to even the shader, which was bugged for a while, Bungie has fixed it now at the time of recording. It's just a wonderfully, wonderfully crafted destination. Only problem I have with it, like I've said already, is overthrow is way, way too grindy. So if Bungie could, you know, take advice from not only my video, but from other creators like Datto or Evan F or even Sweatsicle Glad, their videos, overthrow is way too grindy. More stuff like this, though, more linear destinations, that would be just astonishing. Let's transition over from Pale Heart to arguably one of the most, if not the most, important aspect of the game, the loot. All the way from Pale Heart to the current episode, which is Echoes, which we're going to get more info on, you know, we just finished Act 1 at the time of recording this, which is June 27th. We're going to Act 2 starts on July 16th, I believe. The loot, nothing but good things to say. Kvostov, it got nerfed literally today. Still Hunt, 
if you're a hunter on, if you're a hunter with and have Celestial Nighthawk, run Still Hunt. There's no other good damage in the game. I mean, my most recent clear of the new raid, Salvation's Edge, I put in roughly five and a half million damage the whole time, all the way from start of Witness to the end of the raid. I put in five and a half million damage just on the Witness, and I put in roughly three and a half, four million on the Herald of Finality, the first boss. Microcosm, only good if you're a Cenotaph Warlock. Uh, we did get a Legendary Kvostov. That is really, really nice. So now we have a white, a purple, and a exotic Kvostov. Promemoria, No Hesitation, and The Call. All three are a selection of the new um, Pale Heart weapons. Promemoria, S tier SMG. The Call, it's another rocket frame sidearm. We got the first one we got was in the Warlord's Ruin Dungeon. Um, that one can roll the Volt Shot, The Call. I love The Call. It's one of my top one of my five favorites. No hesitation. It's the first support frame AR. Uh, so it says, you know, if you harm targets, you gain a charge, just like you do with glaives. And then if you hit fire at allies while the weapon is fully charged, it gives an insane healing buff. And I have mine crafted with the roll of physic and circle of life, which gives not only my allies infinite restoration, but it gives me infinite restoration and gives the weapon roughly 10 to 15 percent more damage which is really good if i'm trying to keep my teammates alive playing gm content playing stuff like onslaught like you're seeing in the background of this video using the eminence smg from the raid the hammerhead smg from into the light or hammerhead machine gun from into the light and the still hunt exotic sniper rifle um red death the season pass exotic feels all right, it's not the Red Death it once was in Destiny 1. Uh, the ornament you get for it at rank 100 in the Season Pass is the same look as it was in Destiny 1, which is really nice. A little throwback from Bungie, so thank you. Other than that, everything feels good. All the way from, you know, enhancing weapons, like the Into the Light weapons, you're able to enhance those now, all the way to the exotic class item, which, you know... I've opened, what, roughly 400 chests, and I only have 22 of them. The role I'm looking for is um, Caliban's Hand and Liar's Handshake. So right now I have Dragon's uh, Dragon and Liar's Handshake. So infinite reload, basically, which is really nice. But, you know, I've been running Nighthawk on Prismatic, which nothing but astonishing, astonishing, astonishing things to say about Prismatic. So... Huge win on Bungie's end. You're going to see some prismatic gameplay in the background of this video. Um, actually, right now, there's prismatic gameplay going on right now. As you can see, I have a Solar Super, a Solar Dodge, an Arc Melee, and a Stasis Grenade. So, prismatic, amazing. Um, the build crafting potential is insane, all the way from... That new aspect for Hunter's Ascension. The only problem I have with all of Prismatic is the Hunter Grenade. I don't like the Trip Mine. If Bungie gave Hunter something other than a Trip Mine, it'd be the best thing ever added to this game. And it already is the best thing ever added to this game. More Triumphs, however, for the Pale Heart would be nice. Um, right now on the campaign, we have one secret i don't know what it is i have all the ones light in the future the grandmaster excision the lost sectors on the pale heart amazing amazing lost sectors um the exploration going from cysts to you know overthrow bosses to you know collecting the feathers feathers the most amazing thing ever essentially a scavenger hunt in the pale heart from eight feathers in landing blooming emboss five in lost city refraction seclusion five in divide five in transgression and then six feathers in dual destiny the exotic mission the feathers add just that bit of mystery to the pale heart which i was extremely looking forward to so huge huge win on bungie's part Salvation's Edge. 
easily, easily without a doubt the best raid. Armor, well the armor is kind of ugly, it's amazing armor. The raid, the whole aesthetic of the raid is amazing, Wit infiltrating the raid, which, you know, the raid is the witness, the witness is the raid, infiltrating that, seeing, you know, going from that first encounter all the way to the best encounter in history, fourth encounter, which I have nothing but good things to say about the raid, the exotic euphony could be a little bit better. Um, I'm sure someone like Esoteric or Sneak or even Datto have made a build focused on the Euphony Raid Exotic, how to make it do insane numbers, especially to the Witness himself. But other than that, I have nothing but astonishing, astonishing things to say about the raid. I still have yet to help my friends through, but so far they're loving it as well. Everyone I've talked to is loving Salvation's Edge. Episode Echoes. Bungie and the Final Shape switched from the previous season model of four updates a year to the new model of three updates a year, but every update, every episode has three acts. So we're on Episode Echoes right now, and Act 1 I just finished. Act 2 launches July 16th. That was confirmed today on Twitter. Um... If you've played Destiny before, especially the Lightfall, yeah, Lightfall expansion, you would remember the Season of the Deep, Depositing the Fish, one of the best things, if not the best thing Bungie's ever put in the game, was fishing. I miss it dearly, but with Episode Echoes, we have gardening now. In the new Activity Breach Executable, you smash these pistons, and you can collect samples and plants and stuff turn them into fail safe and you can grow your own garden in the helm you get for completing all of fail safe's research project quests you get a legendary or granite specimen as of right now one i believe is bugged we've had there's three acts there's nine total so i'm assuming three in act one if that is true that means one is bugged which not the end of the world if you collect a thousand grams of you know, ivory radiolite, crimson radiolite, iridescent radiolite, you get legendary radiolite specimens. And then if you collect a rare 400 gram specimen, you get another legendary specimen. And if you find all available specimens, you get the exotic ship, which I'm not positive if you need that for the title. Let me just see here. Uh, it does not look like you need that for the title. As of right now, a total of five triumphs are still secret due to not being able to actually play because those are going to be in act two and act three i'm assuming one of them is going to be about getting the choir of one exotic auto rifle which should be launching in act three i believe and i believe act three drops august 27th or something like that um yeah, August 27th. We will be getting a reprised raid, I believe. We also will be getting two dungeons. Um, if you've even bought the final shape, you will have the pre-order. For example, I have the final shape and annual pass, so I'll get... I have everything the final shape. I have the dungeon key. I get the Rahul secret stashes, an exotic sparrow emblem, all that fun stuff. Um... Bungie is still trying to cram a reverse down everyone's throat, but it is fine. This season they got a Dungeons and Dragons collab. The Hunter ornaments are... They're pretty good. They're not my favorite. Um, the cloak is an animated cloak. It has little thingies that move around on it. I don't... Don't prefer it much, but... You know, it is what it is. Um, Breach Executable, it's a decent activity. It just takes so, so long. Enigma Protocol is another timed activity. For the title, you do need to complete Breach Ex or Enigma Protocol in under 18 minutes, and you have to find all network security nodes 
and destroy all network security nodes in a single run of Enigma Protocol. I haven't done that. My friends haven't done that. No one I know of has done that unless I've just been tuned out. No one has told me. But the overclocked under time triumph completing Enigma Protocol in under 18 minutes. Make sure you have a good team. I went in with... LFG teammates, and we barely got it. I think we finished in 17 minutes and 45, 46 seconds. So we were super close to failing that triumph. And, you know, you need that for the intrepid title, which is the season title. Um, right now, only three new titles. Iconoclast for the raid, Intrepid for Episode Echoes, and Transcendent for the Pale Heart and Final Shape. Um, overall, nothing but... Nothing but decent things to say about the new episode. Um, the armor kind of reminds me of, you know, like samurai stuff. Uh, we did get a legendary wither horde. It is a grenade launcher called um, Lost Signal. New frame, it's an area denial frame, and it's, you know, it's literally wither horde, it, but it's a burst wither horde, so it shoots multiple rounds. And those rounds leave leave a lingering pool on the field like Wither Horde does. Um, we are getting tons and tons of new weapons next, next act. Um, they range from... We're going to get a machine gun. A special grenade launcher. Uh, let's see. Machine gun, special grenade launcher, a shotgun... A trace rifle, a glaive, nope, not a glaive, a rocket sidearm, I think we're gonna, no, no AR, we might get another pulse, let me see, yeah, we're getting another pulse, we're not getting another hand cannon, I believe, uh, we might be getting another bow, nope, not another bow, so we're gonna get quite a few new weapons, we did get Season of the Dawn weapons, Breach Light, Martyrs, well, Breach Light, Line in the Sand, and the Season of Dawn Scout Rifle, we got those remastered with this episode. I haven't crafted them. They look they look better than before, so I will make a video once I have all those crafted, reviewing all of them. But overall, this episode so far, even though we've only done the first act, is astonishing. The gameplay, the story, is unlike anything Bungie's ever told. The only gripe I have with it is, you know, another activity, sort of like the coil from Season of the Wish, would be amazing. Wrapping up the review of Destiny 2 The Final Shape. I love it. To be honest, I love it. It is the best expansion. It... It makes Forsaken look decent. This, from the campaign, the story, uh, excision, the raid, the episode, secret finding. I have nothing but amazing, amazing things to say about it. I hope Bungie continues on this upward grind. I know Sony leaked some stuff early like a week, few days before the Final Shape launched on June 4th. So yeah, I'm like over three weeks late doing this, but I did it, so don't come at me. Bungie's just been killing it, from laying off lead composer Michael Salvatore to, you know, just all the layoffs, all the drama that's happened in the company. They've killed it. I'm excited to see the future of the game. I'm excited to see how the game continues going to see if player counts remain the same. Um, I do really hope they upgrade their servers. Final Shape launch day was a disaster. I was in the queue for maybe two and a half, three hours, and I was getting error coded constantly. But other than that, congrats, Bungie, you did it. Thank you so much for the past 10 years of not only my life, but my friends' lives, my everyone's lives that play the game, you've made memories that we will never, ever forget. Thank you.